Today, we become legends. I surveyed hundreds of Smite community members to find the answer to one simple question. What are the best and worst ultimates in Smite? I sent out a survey form to my own audience as well as the Smite Reddit asking the community to rate every Smite God's ultimate from 1 to 5 based on overall power level. I then averaged out the scores for each God and class. Here's the results. Oh, and by popular demand, I'll be sharing the full Excel sheet for the data for those interested in the full rankings. Link for that will be below. So first up, as always, we have the class averages, which were surprisingly close this time. Mages came out on top with an average score of 3.42 out of 5, very closely followed by Assassins at 3.40, who were themselves closely followed by Guardians at 3.38. Given this form had over 600 responses and each class has so many different gods, it's pretty crazy how even these three classes were, with less than 0.04 points even between first and third. After that there's a larger drop off to warriors at 3.27 and finally hunters round it out with another sizable drop off to 3.07. Even with that said though there's only 0.35 points between the first and last class in these rankings which I guess does make sense. The ultimate of a god is supposed to be the most powerful regardless of class but warriors and especially hunters are clearly a small step down from the rest in this data. Next up let's take a look at the best and worst ultimates for each class. First up we have the mages, where to probably no one's surprise we once again see the morrigan taking a top spot in one of these videos. With a whopping 4.72 out of 5 she clears the next highest mage in Janus by a full 0.2. This makes sense as this ability can technically be just a better version of any ultimate in the game since you also get access to the god in question's base kit as well as their ultimate. The worst mage ranking came out to be hell at 2.20. I left stance switches in for the data collection and was interested to see how they turned out since depending on how you view their stance switching ability. It could be an entirely new ability bar full of basic abilities, or it could be just the passives that the ultimate gives. It seems most people viewed the ability on its own as most stand switching ultimates were rated very low. If we discount stand switchers, Sol was the worst mage ultimate at 2.62. Next up are the assassins where Hunbats takes the top spot with a score of 4.54. This ult has always been viewed as extremely strong by most people due to its massive AoE and death sentence if you don't have beads. Hunbats base kit is pretty bad all things considered but this ultimate definitely carries him with its insane team fight utility. The worst assassin ultimate is one that I think literally everyone could agree with and that's Arachne with a score of 2.26. This ult in a vacuum isn't necessarily the worst thing ever, though even then it's not that great, but especially when you factor in the way it's used within Arachne's kit, it definitely deserves the bottom spot for assassin ults in my opinion. Guardians are up next and Kepri takes the top spot with a score of 4.50. This makes complete sense to me given this ultimate can do something incredibly powerful that almost no other ability in the game can. Sure, Chiron ult can technically do a similar thing, but it's not even close to the same as Kepri ult. It forces you to play the game differently when you're fighting into it and can turn a team fight on its head in an instant. Definitely deserved. The worst Guardian ultimate overall was rated to be RTO at 2.02, but if we discount stand switches again, it would be Ymir at 2.22. Both of these make sense. The community seems to rate stand switching ults on the whole as just the passives they give, and while RTO's MP5 and movement speed from the ult is underrated in my opinion, it's not even close to actual ultimates in terms of power level. I think Ymir as the worst also makes sense if we discount stand switches. Sure, it can be one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game at full charge, but it can be very hard to get that full charge, and it really doesn't do anything supportive besides a small slow. Moving on to Warriors, the best Warrior Ultimate in the game was rated to be Achilles at 4.32, which I think makes total sense. An Execute on a Warrior is already pretty insane, since their lower damage output in general means an Execute is more valuable, as well as their tanky nature, meaning they can easily get into the fight and stay in it while they wait for a perfect Execute target. But of course, Achilles ult is also resettable, which just tips it over the edge. Warrior ults overall were rated quite low, but Achilles ult is definitely one of the best among them. Clearing Vamana's ult by more than 0.3 points. The worst warrior ultimate came out to be Shiva at 2.47, which is noticeably higher than a lot of the other class's worst ults. I do think this makes sense though. Shiva's ult takes such a long time to complete for a pretty mid reward overall. And finally we have the Hunters. The best among them was rated to be Artemis at 3.89, which I can somewhat agree with. I do think Chernobog might be a better ult overall, given it forces the enemy to play a completely different game sometimes, but especially for teamfight value, Artemis is pretty unmatched in the Hunter category. The worst Hunter ultimate surprises probably no one, and that's Charybdis with a pitiful score of 1.55. Far below any other ultimate in the entire ranking, never mind just Hunters. In theory, this ult could be so good with its resettable property, movement speed, and long duration CC immunity, but in practice, hitting this thing is harder than hitting a 720 cross map no scope in Modern Warfare 2. I legit can't remember a single time I've seen someone actually get a reset with this, and in practice, it definitely is the worst 
first Hunter Ultimate in the game. All right, but with that covered, let's get into what you all came here for. The top 10 best and worst Ultimates in the entire game. Quick reminder again that the Excel sheet is linked below if you want to look at the full rankings. So jumping in with the top 10 worst Ultimates first, here's the list. Kumba kicks it off with the 10th worst, which makes complete sense. If anything, I think he maybe should be a little lower. I guess this ult does have some setup value for mages though, but it feels like it really doesn't do too much most of the time. Jingwei follows next, which I'm somewhat torn on. My gut feeling says it doesn't belong in bottom 10 purely because of the safety it gives Jingwei, but I guess when your main selling point on an ultimate is to get out of jail free card, then it's really not that awesome. Sobek takes number 8, which I do feel is a little underrated here again. It's definitely better than Jing and Kumba in my opinion. It's not just damage, it also regens half your mana bar, grants 20% bonus protections, can go through player mid walls, and has a 40% slow the entire time, all while retaining full movement speed to keep that slow on the enemies. All that said, it's far from one of the best ults in the game, but I do think bottom 10 is a little low for Sobek here. Izanami at number 7 makes sense to me though, it's just a small circle damage and silence, there's definitely far better options for a hunter ultimate in smite. Arachne at number 6 is one we've already talked about and definitely deserves bottom 10. Ymir is another one we've already talked about and deserves to be here as well. The next 3 are all stand switcher ultimates, which the community has shown they value as just the ability itself, not the extra bar of basic abilities, so it makes sense that they're down here. If we discounted these abilities though, everything on the list would move down 3 places and Sol, Jormungandr and Shiva would join the bottom 10. Which by the way, what the hell is Jorm doing being anywhere close to bottom 10? I might be crazy here, but Jormul is mid tier at absolute worst in my opinion. And rounding out the bottom 10, we of course have Charybdis, who I've talked about before and I think almost everyone would agree on being in bottom 10, and most would agree bottom 1 is completely fair. This ability barely functions half the time. Alright, and finally, let's get into what the Smite community rates as the top 10 best ultimates. Here's the list. Athena kicks it off, which makes total sense to me. The global presence already secures a pretty high placement, but all the stuff Athena does for the ally and herself as well is just insane. There also may be some recency bias here, given Athena's stranglehold on the meta for the last half year or so, but even still, I think top 10 for her is perfectly sensible. Ares, however, this might be a hot take, but I think Ares ult as number 9 best in the game is extremely overrated. Sure, if it lands, it's amazing. The problem is that 3 or 4 out of the 5 enemies buy beads every game, usually first relic, and like 80% of the cast has a CC immunability somewhere in their kit. Granted, it's usually their ultimate, so they have to burn theirs to avoid yours, which is some value, but I really think Ares ult is highly overrated at number 9. It's far from bad, but I don't think it quite belongs in the top 10. Next up is Achilles, who we've talked about already. Executes in general were very highly valued on this list by the community, with Alquang just missing the top 10 at number 11, and Thanatos taking number 6. Personally though, I'm going to throw in another hot take and say that this ability is a little overrated at number 8. Not massively, it is an incredible ability, but it has counters in saving your jump, Aegis, body blocking, juking, etc. It's far from guaranteed. And I think for my own list, it probably wouldn't quite make the top 10. Thor takes number 7, which again, I think might be a tad overrated. Semi-global presence is of course amazing, and Thor ult truly is one of the best in the game, but number 7 feels just a little bit high for it. I guess in the context of Thor's kit though, it's a lot better, given it's basically a bees check that you die if you fail. Olorun takes the number 6 spot, which makes sense to me. It used to be a one-of-a-kind effect, but of course back in Kujira got something similar, but slightly worse recently. It can be a hard ability to use to its full potential, but if you do get locked into this without beads, you're basically screwed, due to the lengthened ability animations making fighting back a fool's errand, and even jumping or dashing out of it can be too slow and you die anyway. Huge impact ability that probably does deserve to be in the top 10 somewhere. Thanatos comes in at number 5, which is not only an execute, which were highly valued here, but is also a semi-global, which was also highly valued here, so it makes total sense that it made it so high on the list. There's also likely some recency bias for the meta here as well, given Thana has been dominating ranked and casuals for the better part of a year. Kepri makes it to the number 4 spot on the list, which I've talked about already and definitely makes sense. It just does something no other ability in the game can, and forces the enemy team to play a completely different game. Definitely a deserved placement. Yanas takes the number 3 spot, which again, I completely agree with being here. If anything, I might have moved it up to number 2. The one-shot combos are nice, sure, but the main strength of this ability comes in the fact that it's global burst mobility for your entire team. Much like a lot of the top 10, this ability has no real parallel anywhere else in the game and does something you can't find elsewhere. And boy does it do it well. Definitely deserved. Hunbats comes in at number 2, which I do think he deserves an extremely high placement, probably top 5. I think number 2 is a little bit high for him though. Yanis and Kepri are probably better than this in my opinion due to their game warping effects. Sure, Batsul can be absolutely devastating, but it just does something other abilities can but far better. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely an amazing ult, but I think number 2 in the entire game is a little high for it. And finally, we don't really need to talk too much about Morrigan. It can be any other ult in the entire game, plus a full rotation.
rotation of the gods base kit as well. There's a reason it was almost a full 0.2 points above the next highest placement. But that's all I've got for this community survey. What are your personal thoughts? Let me know down below and if you have any suggestions for future surveys you want to see then leave those in the comments as well. Catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.